that. And then we can bring ourselves back to the group, heart to heart when we're ready. And I can hand over to Philip for a moment too now. Welcome, everybody. Um, yes, silence is another language. Um, so it's good to begin in silence. It's one of the great saints, St. John of the Cross, spoke of the silent music of God. So have established ourselves in silence. I share with Patty a welcome to you. And uh, now over to Patty for the first part of our. Our contribution, Patty will speak for a while and then there'll be a little bit of music and then I'll speak and then we'll hopefully go into breakout rooms and uh, be able to listen to your thoughts and your reflections and then come back together at the end and just see if there's anywhere we might take this initiative today that might be beneficial into the future. So that's our rough idea of a plan. Thanks, Philip. Letting a couple more people join us here. As you noticed, I just did uh, hit the record button, Meditation Australia, um, which Philip and I are both on the board. And I see that Janet is here and a few others, I think, from the board as well. Um, they have asked us to record the session today, so other people that couldn't make it could enjoy that. So just so you all are aware of that. Oh, and Lisa is also here. Nice. So um, if I look at how meditation and prayer are similar, I might say that they are both, uh, both an intimate and a unique experience. And if I look at how the two are different, I like the idea that meditation uh, is a listening, perhaps a deep listening, to quote Miriam Rose, and prayer perhaps more a, a deep exchange or communion, a talking with, for me, an invocation to, and an expression of gratitude. Uh, seeking inspiration, really, for my service or how I may use my energy. So listening and talking are ways that I look at it, perhaps, and both are experienced uniquely. The listening to who or to what and the speaking or the communing with to or to what is perhaps unique for all of us as to how we express that. For me, it's source, it's spirit, it's God. Uh, spirit in ancient Sanskrit actually means to love. So my hope today is that we all, with our own different experiences in style and tradition and paths and ways of meditation and prayer, feel some commonality. We are all here together, so we've already got commonality. Um, a loving synthesis, perhaps. The Australian Aboriginal people, the Native American people and other Indigenous peoples teach and remind us of our connection to the earth, of cycles and of a universal oneness. I'm going to share just a little personally today. Um, I was uh, initiated or instructed into a yogic meditation. Uh, in 1974 when I was 13. I'd brief, briefly been to Catholic primary school and then to Presbyterian primary and then high school where I had enjoyed 
uh, the gusto, I guess you'd say, of the battle hymn of the Republic, where the truth is marching on, some of you may recall. In Europe, in my early teens, I visited many sites. However, Assisi stood out and St. Francis's prayer made a big impact on me. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, be loved as to love. For it is giving that we receive and it is pardoning that we are pardoned and it's in dying that we are born to eternal life. And another from my early collection, I had all these written out in my own little book, uh, was The Warm Winds from my year as in a high school exchange student in the United States from the Native American tradition. May the warm winds of heaven blow gently on your house and may the great spirit bless all who enter. May your moccasins make happy tracks in many snows and may the rainbow always touch you. And then from my years re reading and listening to a lot of Vedic uh, literature, um, this favourite hymn is from the last verse of the Rig Veda, 10th mandala of the Rig Veda. And this is a translation. Let your aims be common and your hearts of one accord, and all of you be of one mind, so you may live well together. And then just to acknowledge my genetics, Patty McBain from the Isle of Skye, a little Scottish blessing. If there is righteousness in the heart, I don't think it's about self right there is righteousness in the heart. There will be beauty in the character. If there is beauty in the character, there will be harmony in the home. If there is harmony in the home, there will be order in the nation. If there is order in the nation, there will be peace in the world. So let it be. I feel the inspiration comes from far and wide and deep and perhaps to discern the truth without from a strong knowing of truth within is a key. Not so much from what we think, although sometimes we need to use our thinking mind in a very functional and practical, useful way, rather than judging what might be right or wrong. And on uh, this note, I'd like to just facilitate a short meditation and prayer from my perspective that is part of my own daily practice, and you are welcome to participate. If you feel to, eyes open or closed. Like to make yourself comfortable. If you like to close your eyes. Just gathering ourselves up again. being with ourselves, 
perhaps relaxing into our seats wherever we are, letting our bodies feel a little comfortable, a little more comfortable. And let's grow our connective energetic roots deep down from our body through our legs into our one mother earth. Let's align to our highest, clearest, brightest source, spirit, truth, love, whatever that feeling is for us, whatever we know that to be. And let's settle into the cave of our own hearts and the source or the God within us. Maybe let's protect, place a protective space around us so that we are open just to unconditional love and truth and release any energy that's thoughts or patterns or biases or judgments that are not in of and for love. And then using perhaps our breath or a form of mantra that we use or body awareness to just sit with that for a moment. And then I'm going to continue more as a prayer. Thank you. Thank you for my breath, my life. Thank you for the challenges to grow and learn. Thank you for all the blessings. Thank you for this body. I am grateful and I choose gratitude. God, source, spirit, thy will, not my will be done. What would you have me do? How would you have me be? And then let's again perhaps just sit for a little. Just allowing our own inspiration to flow from within. Now let's allow some more inspiration from without and I'm going to pass the baton across to Philip. 
Is, is that the baton that just got passed? Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. So I'll just begin, and perhaps just beginning by saying that Patty and I have um, connected with each other through Meditation Australia, through our love of meditation and our yearning to um, help more people to discover meditation. Uh, and establish a practice. So, you know, meditation is a pathway to friendship, we can say. And I might begin by just, um, and this might be something you'd like to take up in the chat, by just um, reflecting on the many people I can be grateful to who have helped me to learn, who've taught me about prayer and meditation. And that goes back to childhood. It's in our church. It's Mothering Sunday, Lent 4 today. So I remember my, the, my mother kneeling by, her, kneeling by her bed, saying her prayers. Uh, she was a very, that was a very powerful image of childhood. And I'm sure I'm one of many uh, saved from getting into even more trouble by a mother's prayers. I remember from childhood um, in the country, people with real working hands together in prayer and hands that were much gnarled and affected by the work that they did. But that image of um, people bringing all, that they, all their needs and yearnings and hopes and dreams uh, as their hands came together. And then, um, Later, once I was in, ordained, um, the hands that would reach out in the form of a cross to receive the sacrament and just a variety of hands and the gesture of devotion. Um, these have been deeply um, moving and inspirational. There's been many individuals, many, it was the priest I went to to learn about Christian meditation who was in a little country parish and uh, he would get me up as it was his practice very early in the morning and um, go over to the church and he'd begin to meditate and I'd go to sleep and then I'd wake up again a while later, he'd still be meditating. And uh, then he would um, open his prayer book and he had this battered old prayer book full of lists and he had this saying that we, go, we go, in, go into God with the world in our hearts. He had this ministry of um, people asking him to pray for all sorts of circumstances and conditions around the globe. So there in this little country town in Victoria, uh, he was going into God with the world in his heart. So that models like that in you, perhaps as I reflect, you think about models of prayer and meditation also in your lives. And as Patty was saying, it's also true in terms of friendships, interfaith friendships, uh, Muslim friends with their fidelity to prayer, Ramadan about to begin, a sharing the Shabbat meal with Jewish friends, uh, the Maharishi who introduced me from the Vedic tradition to mantric meditation, Buddhist friends and their um, teaching me to be more attentive to breath as a way of being more attentive to being here and now, and Sikh friends too with their generosity of spirit and their welcome to their temples for particular occasions. So amidst uh, sometimes amidst so much that's bleak in the world we just remember there are these dear souls praying and meditating and no doubt as i speak you can remember folk uh, that are in your heart in gratitude and in terms of my own um, practice as paddy was saying prayer, prayer particularly is relational 
And because it's relational, meditation too, it's always evolving. Uh, we never kind of arrive. It's always evolving. But my living tradition is based on mantric meditation, but it's the use of the Jesus prayer. And uh, for me, that's Jesus have mercy. The remembering that the word mercy in its origin speaks of the compassion in the heart of God. And I find the Jesus prayer, which I've now practiced for more than 40 years, just completely wonderful and beautiful, both as a way of um, sustaining some quality of communion. And there is a mysterious, wonderful relation between name and presence, that in the saying of the sacred name, there's awareness of presence, of communion. So it's a beautiful means of communion, along with and complementing other means of communion, but it's also immensely practical for protection because as the sages remind us, we do become what we think. Therefore, we do need to be attentive to what we think about and what we let influence our thinking because our words will shape our, our thoughts will shape our words and then our actions. And the pattern of our thoughts and words and actions over time shapes our character and effectively our destiny, what becomes of us. So being attentive to what we let ourselves think about and what we let influence our thinking is crucial to lead a life that's true to ourselves and true to the most high and true to those whom we cherish. And so the Jesus prayer, which I can return to whenever I become aware that my mind, that I'm thinking things that will take me in a direction I don't want to continue, the Jesus prayer uh, is so practical and so powerful as a way of protecting and uh, allowing the best opportunity to think, say, and do that which may well be more beneficial. So I'm, and it does lead then onto a way of um, interceding or praying for. And it's, it's a wisdom that's uh, beyond all of our comprehension, but it does, does seem, and it's an ancient wisdom, that the way things are designed by the, by the Most High, we're invited to ask for what we want, what we need. And it's a bit like the planting of seeds being necessary uh, for there to be something that will grow. So uh, we're encouraged to be unselfconscious about asking for that which we need and discerning about those things that we do pray for. But I'm going to share just now for a couple of minutes the way I meditate using the Jesus prayer and how that then intersects with um, praying for others. So again, as with Patty, if you would like perhaps just to close your eyes and be settled where you are. And be attentive initially to our breathing. And out. Deep breaths, but not to the point of any strain. And then rather than allow the thoughts to come and go as they start to come and go, simply place in your minds and repeat over as if to yourself, under your breath, Jesus, have mercy. And the only instruction is to, is to repeat without any strain, Jesus, have mercy. When you lose the prayer, find you're thinking something else, but it's so gently return to saying under your breath as if to yourself, Jesus have mercy. 
we'll just do this for a minute or two, and then I'll share how that can be a bridge into praying for people who are on our hearts. Now, as you continue to say, Jesus, have mercy under your breath, just picture in your mind's eye, visualize someone, those who are particularly on your heart today, for whom you have a loving intention in prayer. Just visualize while praying, Jesus have mercy. Now just take a moment or two to very gently open your eyes. Well, and just to conclude, of course, there are many other forms of prayer, prayers for healing with laying on of hands and anointing with oil, current matters of prayer. Um, some of you might know of the Calm Collective that meets every Sunday evening at 9 p.m., where we've been meditating for the people of Ukraine and the people of Russia. Um, and we've heard the sense of being sustained um, that comes back from those in the midst of that most awful circumstance. So just 
just to conclude, my pattern is what we've just shared, plus the normal pattern of morning and evening prayer, and also an, a night prayer, uh, which I pray over and for my family and loved ones. And it goes like this, and I might conclude, even though it's not quite night yet, certainly not for Paddy and WA, not even lunchtime. I'll just pray this prayer. Lord, be the guest of our home and the homes of those we love. Keep far from us any trouble and danger. May your holy angels watch over us and be the guardians of our peace. As your blessings keep resting upon us, we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. So that's um, a little kind of cameo of um, how I try to sustain a life of prayer and meditation. And now back to my B. Patty, who's going to put us into breakout rooms to share some thoughts together. Philip, would you like me to play the, uh, the little clip? Um, Maybe that might cut back on people's time to talk together. Let, let's okay. Let's... Okay. So we are going to have the opportunity now to uh, go into some breakout rooms and there we can share our own experiences, listen to one another. Uh, we'll leave it up to everyone. So bear with me while I... Create those. Let's if see. You, if you've got thoughts to share, put them in the chat if you think we might otherwise lose them or, or write to Meditation Australia. Thank you. Good idea. So we'll create the breakout rooms um, and maybe let's, we've got 38, maybe until about 5 2, and then just we can come back for the last five minutes before we wrap up for the day. And yeah, away we go. Thanks, Lisa. I'm back. We're all back. Philip's unmuted too. Well, that was wonderful experience. Well, it was in the group that I kind of bombed and uh, got into. And I would just like to, we just have a couple of minutes really to, to close the session. I mean, all I want to say is thank you for coming, but... It, does anyone have um, 
anything they would like to share that's come out of their their exploring and discussion and listening and conversing in a group. We'd love to hear from anyone. I think in our group, the theme was around um, just how much we value the practice and what it, just how much it gives to us very on a very tangible level, on a physical level, but also for those around us that, where we really see the results so directly. Mm. Well, that's an important outcome. I loved um, just hearing how everyone in my group came to practice in a completely different path, um, but we all ended up there some way, somehow, and it just really drove home that spirit is home. Well, that's powerful. Compassion helps becoming one with the surrounding nature. Sounds like everybody could host one of these themselves. So much wisdom pouring out. Well, I won't speak for Philip. I feel like that too. I feel like everybody has so much to share. So, Philip, would you like to have some concluding remarks? Uh, we did have a request for the link to the Calm Collective for people who wanted to join in the meditations for Ukraine and Russia. And if there's um, if uh, the, if we have a list of people here, we could perhaps send them that link. Uh, that's for nine o'clock tonight. The continuing meditations for Ukraine and all that all that around surrounds that. And tonight at nine p.m. Eastern time, um, it'll be led by Sawat Tasneem, a Muslim woman from New Zealand, who is going to make the start for the contribution. That might be one thing that keeps us all contributing into um, the rest of the day. Okay, great. If anybody, um, I don't have the link right here with me, but if anybody would like to uh, send their, what's the best way to do this, do you think, Lisa? Um, I'm I just thinking I have the link with me, so I could probably find it in less than a minute. Okay, great. Why don't we pop it on the chat here? And then if there, anybody has difficulty accessing their chats, I won't shut the meeting down, even though we're at time. So if you would like to wait, that once Lisa gets the link, we'll post it in the chat. If uh, that's not easy for you to access for any reason, um, you could send a message to Meditation Australia and we can send it out to you. But if also, we also um, perhaps go to the Calm in the City website, just Google Calm in the City website. City. Great. And they would, I'm just going to paste it here right now. Oh, hang on. Is it here? I've just copied and pasted some things from the email. Terrific. There we go. Uh, the, I don't think the links have come through. Hang on, I'll see if I can get the actual links. That's in the chat. And that usually it lights up down at the bottom of your screen there to say there's something in the chat. It if you have the meeting ID there. So Okay, terrific. Does that work for people? And I think just the last thing to say is if people have got ideas about how we continue what we've been doing the last hour together, please let us know so we can keep building the strength and the beauty of the way that we're contributing together. Lovely. Um, I'm just going to post another link. This is the link to register with Calm in the City as um, so that you, you receive their emails every week. Okay. 